If you already know how to edit your YouTube videos in Premiere Pro or Final Cut, then what the heck do you even need Descript for? It's kind of infuriating to use if you already know how to use a real or let's just call it a traditional timeline editor. However, despite Descript's quirks, it has improved my workflow quite a bit. And I'm talking about saving a ton of time in the editing and creation and just kind of like the building of my YouTube videos, even though I do still use Premiere Pro. So let's talk about it. My name is Meredith. If you're new here, I'm here to help you look good, sound good, and feel good on camera so that you can build your thriving online business with YouTube. First of all, IndieScript's help docs, they even say you have to kind of think about video editing a little bit differently than you would normally think about it with you know, a traditional timeline editor. And they're not lying when they say that. What they imagined when they built Descript was really I think probably nothing like how it's actually turned out because people who do know how to use regular traditional editors are using it and they want all those same features. But I think the Descript team like still wants it to stay kind of simple and accessible for people who don't want a cumbersome editor. And I feel like that's where a lot of the Descript frustration has been. But they've made some improvements when it comes to that, which I'll get to in just a second. The first thing to think about with Descript, if you're used to a regular timeline editor, is the concept of editing in a doc. This has been Descript's like whole thing. It's been their whole personality is editing just like you're editing a doc, which means as the words have come out of your mouth in the video, they're being transcribed. You can see them on the screen and you can get rid of all of the parts where you messed up, which for me, as you know, is a lot. And you can even rearrange things, get rid of stuff without having to do that in the timeline, which makes sense if they're trying to build a product for people who don't want to use a traditional timeline editor. That means that when you record a video like this one, I'm gonna record this, I'm gonna pull it into Descript, I'm gonna get rid of all the crap where I messed up. That means that I don't have to scrub through the entire timeline to find all of the good takes, all of the places where the words came out the way that I wanted them to and find all the places that need to be cut and cut them. I just get to read through the doc. I can see where I've restarted my same sentence 17 times and get rid of all of that and not even have to scrub through it in the timeline. That has been probably the biggest time saver for me because of the way that I record my videos because I mess up a lot. And it also takes the pressure off of me when I'm recording, knowing how easy it is to clean up and like get a rough cut of this video, knowing it's okay that I made all these mistakes because it's so easy to find them in the doc versus having to go through minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes worth of screw ups, let's be honest, to kind of like figure out how we're gonna put this video together. Like, did I even spit out a cohesive sentence at all? So if you use a traditional timeline editor, but you don't like to have to scrub through all of that stuff to find all of the good takes, you could just use Descript for that feature alone. And yes, Premiere Pro has like the editing by text feature function. It's kind of slow and clunky and a bit weird and janky, to be honest, compared to what Descript has done, because they have, again, they've made this their whole personality. They've really perfected the concept of editing a video as a document. But then when you do go to the timeline in Descript, the way that the cuts and the scenes and the clips and the sequences work is totally bonkers compared to a traditional timeline editor. And so to be honest, I avoid scenes, what Descript calls scenes, like the plague. If I can get away with having a video in Descript that has no scenes, I will go with the no scenes. I think I understand why scenes were created. And the reason why I'm putting this in quotes is because like scene is such a uh, almost like it's like an arbitrary term. It's like, what is a scene? You have a scene, you know, clapper thing, you know, this thing right here. Scenes sort of like already have a dozen definitions. And so scenes were like, I guess a way for Descript to say, okay, if you're editing in a doc, 
and you don't want to look at the timeline and you want to pretend the timeline doesn't exist and you want to pretend that you're not actually editing a video and we're just going to edit it like a doc, This we can put this sentence right here as a scene and decide what we want to be in the scene, like visually, like maybe we want to have some B-roll just in this scene. And so by using the doc, you can say, when I start this word and when I end at that word, we're going to put these two slashes and then you can put whatever you want in the scene. It's very confusing. It might make sense if, again, if you didn't want to look at the timeline and you wanted to pretend you weren't actually editing a video, I guess it makes sense. But for those of us who use regular traditional video editors, it's like, what is happening? It makes me feel like I don't even know what I'm doing. And at that point, I go, why don't we just pull this into Premiere Pro and edit it like a real video? Because that's really what we're doing here is editing a video. Because you can apply scenes to different parts of your document. And then if you do go down to the timeline and you try to like change things or manipulate things, the timeline does not work the way you would think a timeline would work, and it's because these scenes are getting in the way. However, I have noticed in the last few months, even with scenes in my document, that the timeline is now sort of operating more the way you would expect a timeline to operate. It used to be like if you wanted to change the volume or zoom in or zoom out on part of a clip, you actually had to do that as a scene or like make those edits to the scene, which means you had to set the scene. You can now sort of manipulate the clips like you normally would in a traditional editor. So if you tried Descript before and you hated it because of the scenes, first of all, I hear you. Second of all, they've, they've kind of improved how that works. So back to my original point that I made about scenes, which is if I can avoid using the scenes function, then I will 100% as often as I can avoid using the scenes function because it's not very consistent like how they actually operate. Another area of confusion and frustration, I think whether you're used to using a traditional editor or not, with Descript is the concept of sequences. And we have sequences in Premiere Pro um, and in Final Cut Pro, I, I think. It's been a while since I used Final Cut, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. So a sequence is like if you have multiple tracks that you want to stay together, like in in a bucket. You know, if you have like a podcast episode where you have a host and you have a guest and you, maybe you, there's like a logo in there and there's the audio track and you want to keep that stuff bundled together as you edit you know, as you get rid of the dead space or get rid of these words or that mess up or whatever. And so you're editing all these tracks that are all sort of connected. They're they're together. What's weird to me is if you think about it, a video clip is already a sequence, like it's an audio and it's a visual and they're already connected, but they're not necessarily in a sequence. So if if you like, for example, have uh, your audio and your visual are out of sync and you need to sync them up, in order to do that, you have to detach the audio. That makes sense. But then now in order to actually make the edit, you have to double click, it opens up as a sequence and now you're editing the sequence. And confusion about sequences I see um, popping up a lot with people who just are really new to editing and uh, you know, and in particular editing with the timeline, of course. And so uh, I think sequences are a way to give people who want the fine tuning control of the different tracks on the timeline a way to do that, but then still keep the main timeline um, sort of like simple. Why do I always feel like every video I do about Descript, I have to like give a disclaimer that this is not a complaint. I don't hate Descript. <laughs> Where Descript saves me time is in my rough cuts, um, getting rid of the stuff I don't want in my videos, maybe rearranging clips as I go and sort of piecing together the foundation of a video. And then I export it and I bring it into Premiere Pro. And I have a whole video. If it's published, I'll put it up here, but it's a whole video on exactly how I 
polish my videos in Premiere Pro once I create a rough cut in Descript. But it doesn't matter what editor I'm using, I'm always following this BFF process, basic, fine tune, and fancy. And I'll put a link to my BFF method cheat sheet down in the description below this video.